Welcome everyone to our candidates and office holders financial disclosures training. If you'll notice there in the bottom corner, just a little disclaimer that this presentation is not a substitute for Utah State Code and it is not intended to be comprehensive or an authoritative statement of law. That being said, if you do have any questions or concerns after you watch this presentation, please reach out to our office and we are happy to help in any way that we can. The presentation itself is designed to take you from the beginning to the end of your campaign reporting. Um, so we'll teach you how to open your account. We'll talk about your contributions, your expenditures, reports that you need to file, fines and penalties that can be associated when you do not meet statute. And then of course, we'll teach you how to close your account. So what is a candidate? Uh, a candidate is anyone who files a declaration of candidacy or spends or receives money to bring about their nomination. Legislative and state school board candidates file with our office, the Lieutenant Governor's office. One question we get a lot is who else files with our office? So let's take a look at that. So the following entities also report with our office, statewide candidates, which we mentioned, political parties, political action committees, political issues committees, corporations, judges, and labor organizations. Um, county and local school board candidates will file with their county and federal candidates will report with the FEC. So this presentation is mainly concerned with those statewide candidates and the requirements for you. Now everyone who um, files that declaration and becomes a candidate is required to have a campaign bank account. It needs to be separate from your personal or business accounts and it can only be used for campaign purposes. So it's very important that uh, you do not commingle funds between any of your bank accounts. Just be sure to have this separate bank account. Code also um, requires that you open an account on disclosures.utah.gov on our website. If you've never opened a financial disclosures account with our office, then you will need to create one with us. If you have in the past, um, you can just call us and we can help you get set up from there. But if you haven't, you'll want to get on to disclosures.utah.gov and on the left side of the screen, there's a button that says new user. And then you'll just fill in the appropriate information. It's essentially your contact information for our purposes. And then as soon as you've finished creating that username um, and what is frequently the most missed step in this process is call our office. Our office has to set up your entity where the public can view um, your disclosures. So it's very important that you call us or that will never be set up. So what is a contribution? Um, a contribution is anything of value that your campaign receives. Some common types of contributions are money donations, gifts, loans, services, um, in-kind contributions. One thing I would like to point out is that contributions do not include unpaid volunteering or goods or services that your campaign did not authorize or coordinate. So frequently um, people will call and they'll say, hey, I just found out that a group of people held an event in support of me. I had no idea. It wasn't authorized through my campaign. Do I need to report that? No, you do not need to report that. Um, if it's not authorized by you, it's not a part of your campaign. As well, you are not required to list um, volunteer hours for people who come to help you. If, it's, if they're volunteering for something that you wouldn't normally pay them for, then you wouldn't need to list that as an in-kind contribution to your ledger. Um, if you do ever have any questions, you aren't sure if something should be listed or if it should um, not be listed, please just call and I'm happy to walk through that with you. Are there contribution limitations? Um, so any individual, corporation, PAC, or political party may contribute to your campaign. Political issues committees cannot contribute to your campaign, and likewise, um, you cannot contribute to political issues committees. Um, as well, Utah law does not limit how much a contributor can give to your campaign, but we will say it's recommended if someone does give to your campaign, 
that you make sure they know that they might be required to file with our office. That way um, it keeps them out of any future trouble that they could be in for not reporting and um, it's a check for you too. So again, if someone does give you money and they might be required to file with our office, just have them reach out to us and we are happy to help them out. What should I report? All right, so code says that you should report a detailed listing of the contributions you receive. So what is a detailed listing? A detailed listing means the name and address of the individual or source making the contribution, the amount or value of the contribution, and the date the contribution was received. So it's those four things, name, address, amount, and date. One thing to note, on an address, it does mean where an individual resides. So um, people who contribute to you will be required to list their name and residential address for the public to see. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. One thing also to note, when you are saving your contributions to your ledger um, and you put them on your ledger in that appropriate time frame, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, you have met your filing requirement. So there's a picture right there of the save button. As soon as you click the save button when you enter a contribution, um, your, your filing deadline is met for that contribution. You're not required to hit that file report button until it is due. And the file report button doesn't need to be pressed until all your contributions and expenditures are entered for that entire reporting period. So again, just keep in mind, pushing the save button does save that contribution and fulfill your reporting requirement. Reporting periods. All right, so normally contributions, including your in-kind contributions, must be saved to your ledger within 31 days of receipt. There is one caveat, um, and I wanna talk about it. So if you are contested during convention, the primary election or the general election, your contribution reporting windows are going to temporarily shorten. So during the 30 days prior to a convention, the primary or the general election, you must report your contributions within three business days of receiving them. If you are contested, and there's that big if. Um, so the next one, that is coming up that would fall in this three business day deadline is 30 days before the general election. So starting on Sunday, October 7th, if you are contested in the general election, you will need to report your contributions within three business days of receiving them. The best advice I can give, because this can be the most confusing part of contribution reporting, is to enter your contributions to your ledger as soon as you receive them. Um, the sooner the better, and that's gonna keep you safe from any fines or penalties that might be associated for not entering them on time. So again, starting October 7th, if you're contested, instead of that 31 day deadline, you're gonna have a three business day deadline. Okay, so let's look at some frequently asked questions for contributions. May I give to my campaign? Yes, you are allowed to donate your money to your campaign. Um, that being said, please keep in mind that those contributions that you make to yourself do fall in that 31 day or three business day deadline. So you need to make sure that you're reporting those in a timely manner so you aren't fined on the funds that you donate to your campaign. When is the receive date of my contributor? So there's kind of three different receive dates that you can have. If you receive cash, the receive date for cash is the day it is handed to you. If you receive a check, it's gonna be the day you deposit that check into your account. Uh, that's a frequent um, call I receive. Uh, people will tell me that they got a check, um, and then a week later they deposited it, what is their receipt date? It's gonna be that week later when you deposited it and had access to your to those funds. Um, and then lastly, what is the receipt date for an in-kind contribution? That is gonna be the day you benefit from a service. So one example I can give is 
let's say a person tells you that they would like to create a website for you. Um, and they want to do it free of charge, so it's going to be an in-kind contribution. Well, the day that you benefit from that website is going to be the day it goes live. So be sure um, when you do your in-kind contributions to list that day you benefit from them. If you ever have a question about that, um, please call. We can talk through it and we can figure out what that actual received date is. Okay, what do I do with an anonymous contribution? Within 31 days after receiving an anonymous contribution that is over $50, you must give the contribution to the treasurer of the state or a political subdivision or to a nonprofit organization. So that's if that contribution exceeds $50. Now, if it's less than $50 and it's anonymous, you are allowed to keep those funds. One thing I will mention though, is that the word anonymous literally means you have no idea where it came from. So essentially someone dropped cash off at your doorstep and then left and you, you have no idea. So in other words, a person couldn't give you $25 and say, hey, I'd like it to be anonymous, even though you technically know who they are. So again, this is if it is entirely anonymous that you're allowed to keep that $50 or less than $50. Either way, you are required to report that to your ledger. So you'll report the anonymous contribution. It'll be um, donated by an anonymous. Um, if it is over that $50 or you just want to donate it anyways, you will want to also add an expenditure to your ledger that states where you gave that anonymous contribution. So. If you give it to the state, you'd list the state, or if you give it to a nonprofit, you'd list the nonprofit. May I report small donations as a lump sum? No, you cannot. So each contribution that you receive needs to be listed separately and needs the name, address, amount, and receive date of the contribution. So you can never do lump sums. All right, so what is an expenditure then? An expenditure is anything of value that your campaign spends. Some common expenditures are purchases or payments, compensation for staff or services, and campaign loan repayments. Now, every expenditure that you make for your campaign needs to be reported. But unlike contributions, expenditures just need to be reported prior to a reporting deadline. So there's no 31 day or three business day deadline they just need to be reported on your ledger before the next reporting deadline. So what should you report on expenditures? Now code says that your expenditures need to have again a detailed listing, which for an expenditure means the amount of the expenditure, the person or entity to whom it was ultimately dispersed, the specific purpose, item or service acquired by the expenditure, and the date the expenditure was made. So again, amount, whom it was given to, a specific purpose, and a date. Now let's talk about the word ultimately dispersed. So frequently um, when we do our audit every year, I'll see that people have listed um, a credit card as the person that they were giving money to. So they'll say they spent $500 um, to American Express. Now, in that case, I have no idea where that money went. So you didn't actually spend $500 to American Express, you spent $100 on mailers, you spent $200 on supplies for an event. Um, you spent that money other places than to American Express. So be sure that you don't list that transactional mediator. Tell us exactly where that money went when you spend it. Um, as well, be specific in the purpose of the item that you list. Um, for example, that word supplies is a, a common one that we see. It's okay to say, I got supplies for an event or I got supplies for my office, but 
please um, be specific. Don't just say supplies because we, we don't know what that means. So again, um, just be specific and let us know where that money is going. Now there are some prohibited expenditures. Um, specifically, um, you cannot use your campaign funds for your or your family's personal use. Um, generally, if an expenditure is not related to your campaign or your officeholder duties and benefits you or your family, the expenditure is going to be prohibited. Utah Code is very specific in clothing. You are not allowed to use your funding for clothing. Um, now, let's say you listed that you spent money on t-shirts. And now we would reach out to you and ask, hey, what are these t-shirts? If they were t-shirts for your campaign, um, they had your name on them and your team used them for your campaign, again, that would be fine. But if it was just a regular t-shirt, obviously it's going to be prohibited. So again, comes back to that specific purpose. Make sure that you are specific in your purpose on your expenditures. The penalty for a personal use expenditure is pretty hefty. So if it is determined that you used your funds for personal use, you are required to pay a fine of equal to 50% of the personal use that was listed and you are required to repay your campaign that exact amount of money. So just be careful if you ever aren't sure if something would be a personal use expenditure, again, call our office. We'll talk through it with you and help you um, decide what is best to list on your ledger. Reporting periods. There are five required reports which must be timely filed. Um, failure to file these reports can result in fines and penalties. So let's go ahead and look at the reporting deadlines for legislative reporting. Okay, so convention report is the first report of the year. It's due seven days before your convention and it includes transactions from January 1st to five days before that report due date. Your next report is the primary report. It's due June 19th um, and includes transactions from four days before your convention report is due to June 14th. Um, also, I will point out these are for 2018 deadlines, so we will update them every year. Um, but for the purpose of this uh, presentation, we do have obviously this year's reporting deadlines. The September 30th report, which is the report coming up very soon, is due October 1st, and it's going to include transactions from June 15th to September 26th. Following that, the general report is going to be due October 30th, including transactions between September 27th and October 25th, and then the year end, which will be due January 10th of 2019 and includes transactions from October 26th to December 31st. Now one thing I like to point out is that there is a five day window between um, the transactions that are included in the reporting deadline and when the report is actually due. So you have five days to make sure that you have everything entered before you have to hit that file report button. Um, now where is that file report button? On your ledger when you are in looking at it, on the right hand side, there is a button that says file report. Now you'll just want to make sure you click on the file report that is associated with the report that is due. Um, if you have any questions, we can walk through that with you, but it's fairly simple. You just click that button and then you'll click confirm and then your report will be filed. Now state school board candidates and office holders have essentially the same reporting deadlines except for that convention report turns into the May 15th report. Um, because State School Board is unpartisan, obviously they don't have a convention and so it is just that May 15th deadline. But everything else is exactly the same. All right, so one common question I get is, what does the public see when they look at my ledger? Um, if you will see right here, this is our test candidate. Um, 
Under that filed reports button, that's where the public is going to look to see your contributions and expenditures. So, for example, we will click on that 2014 convention filed report. And this is what the public's going to see. So at the top, it's going to say your name. It's going to have your contact information. Um, and then below that is that balance summary. Now that balance summary is kind of the total. So how much you spent and how much you received in that reporting period. And then it'll tell the balance based off of that. As well, they're going to see those itemized contributions that you received during that reporting period and the itemized expenditures you made during that reporting period. So essentially, they're going to see everything that you entered on your ledger for that reporting period once you click that file report button. Now we need to talk about the fines and penalties for failing to report within these deadlines. So first, let's look at contributions. Failing to report a contribution within the appropriate 31 or 3 business day time period can result in one of two fines. Um, the first one is equal to 10% of that late contribution um, if it's reported within 60 days after the deadline. If it's greater than 60 days after the deadline, it bumps up to 20%. Now, our office will reach out to you on these contributions. Our system has a way of flagging these late contributions. So essentially what happens is we see this flag come on our system and then we send you an email to make sure that you did enter your contributions according to that correct received date. When you let us know at that point, we will either um, have you make a correction or we'll issue that 10% or 20% fine. So again, the best advice I can give when entering your contributions and your expenditures for that matter is to enter them as soon as you receive or expend them. The sooner the better. Your reports are, are come associated with fines and penalties. Now, the convention report, if you do not file this on time, each report is due by 11.59 on that deadline, you will be fined $100. Now, primary September 30th and general, um, along with that fine, there is a pretty severe penalty. You have that potential disqualification from the election. Now, our office will send you reminders. We'll send you um, emails starting 10 days before the report is due um, and then all the way up until that report is due. We'll also call you. We do everything in our power so that you are not disqualified from the election and so that you're not fined. Um, if you do have any problems, especially as that deadline gets close, call us and we'll walk through it with you. We'll do whatever we can to make sure that these reports are filed so you're not subject to these fines and penalties. All right, so when to start and stop reporting. If you lose an election, resign from office, or affirm that you are no longer receiving or spent expending money, you have the option of closing your financial disclosure account. Now, you're not required to close that account, um, but if you do choose to keep your account open, you must file the year-end report each year your account stays open, even if you're not expending or receiving funding. So it's very important that if you do choose to keep that open, you... Um, do still file that year-end report. If you do not file that year-end report, you're still subject to that $100 fine, and also um, you can be guilty of a Class B misdemeanor. So again, if you choose to keep it open, that's fine, but be sure to file that year-end report. Um, closing your account is pretty simple. On your um, ledger, when you, when you enter your disclosures account, up by your name, there's a button that just says close account. All you have to do is click that button and then it will walk you through the steps to closing your account. The biggest step is to make sure that your account balance is zero. You do have to balance out your account before you can close it. So um, if you do ever come to the point where you need to close your account or want to close your account, we um, can send you some detailed instructions. Just send us an email or give us a call and we'll walk you through that process. I realize that this law is a lot, it's confusing. Um, 
If you do have questions, concerns, please reach out to us. Um, our email is disclosure at utah.gov and our phone number is 801-538-1041. Um, thank you and we look forward to hearing from you.